So what happened is Samir was picking up balls and some of the balls, we was putting the balls in the basket, some of the balls fell away. And I said, it's good to accept imperfection in tennis. Right? You stand there behind the camera, so I'm talking to you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's good to learn to accept imperfection that uh, you, when you miss a few balls, you're not immediately negative, like, oh, I didn't do it right. Judgment, negative behavior, something is wrong, mistake, punishment. I missed the balls, they're not going in, bad. Because I said, well, if you play tennis, you must learn to, in, to accept the imperfections, you're being imperfect, you can't do this perfectly, because it never stops, it never stops. You. I play third years, I'm quite a good player, I can't stop missing, I can't. I watch the pros, no one plays with zero unforced errors. They're unforced. They put in the category unforced errors. That means the player was set up, the ball was not difficult. The guy who's making the statistics have been taught, have been trained, how to assess whether an error is unforced or forced. They know their jobs. Sometimes they make a mistake, but generally, all right, so they know what is an unforced error, it's not forced. It's just a stupid mistake, or however you want to call it. It's a difficult sport, it looks easy, but it's not. But we miss. It never stops, mis mis mistakes don't go away. It's only that when you hit the ball in, it's better. <laughs> you understand? Now you're not happy with your forehand, the ball goes in, but you're not so happy. Now what we'll make is going, we're going to make the balls that go in better. But you're still going to miss. The mistakes, the ratio of mistakes will roughly stay the same. Because once you have a better forehand, you're going to try and hit better balls. So you will increase the risk a bit. That's why your ratio of missing will be roughly the same. That's something you must think about. So mistakes never stop. They never, they never go away. And so my idea was, normally we get negative about something because we want to eliminate it. We want to create so much pain that it goes away. So my, my analogy was, let's say I want to lose weight and I, I, and I happen to have a habit or, or desire or urge to eat a chocolate cake every day, right? So every day I eat a chocolate cake and after that, I feel bad about it. Oh, you stupid idiot. You couldn't resist the urge. Now you're gaining weight, right? So I want to feel very bad about, I, I will get down on myself, I'll feel very bad. I'll give, call myself names, right? To cause myself pain, because I want this pain to be so big that it's greater than the pleasure I get from eating a chocolate cake. That is the purpose of punishment. Right? Maybe sometimes you never thought about that. What is the purpose of punishment? Why do you scold your children? <laughs> because you want them to stop the behavior. You agree? You don't want to scold them for the next 40 years. Or 20 years, when, as long as they're with you, you go mad. You want to stop the behavior. If they're on the road and the car is coming, you, hey! You want to scare them a bit and no, don't do that because you want to stop, it's dangerous, right? That is the purpose of punishment, like negativity. Stop the behavior. Well, we use this for tennis. But it will never go away. You will never, mistakes will never go away. Never. So my point is that it's pointless to get negative and judgmental. It's pointless. You must think about it. Wait a minute. I can't stop this behavior. You can't. You cannot improve your forehand to a point where you won't miss it. You cannot improve your mind and your skills to a point where you won't miss a short ball. It cannot be done. Players are training four hours a day for 20 years. They can't remove it. They can't. They miss sometimes. So with the chocolate cake, right, the analogy was, okay, I eat the chocolate cake, I criticize myself, you stupid idiot, 
to a point where I feel so so much pain. I cause so much pain to myself. Since I'm an adult, otherwise my parents would cause. But we learn to put the parent in our head, and our parent is criticizing us, but it's in the head, even if they're dead. It's our head. So we must remove that. We must become adults. No, no more parent. We make our own choice. But the goal is that I become so negative that I cause so myself so much pain through this criticism that I will stop the behavior. I will stop eating the chocolate cake so I can lose weight. You see, that's the purpose of negativity. To stop the behavior. Cause myself so much pain, gradually, pain, 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 pain. I reach a threshold. Okay, that's it. Or I look myself in the mirror, let's say I'm more fat, and I'm, I look myself every day in the mirror and I'm fat and I don't like it or whatever, up to a point where I feel so much pain that I say, okay, that's it. No more chocolate cakes, go to the gym, run, breathe, whatever. You understand? I need to reach the threshold when the decision comes in commitment. So that's why we use negativity and punishment. <laughs> Now we come to tennis court, we use negativity and punishment to try and remove something that cannot be removed. We try to eliminate mistakes that cannot be eliminated. <laughs> you see my point? So my point is accept it. That doesn't mean you give up. People misinterpret the idea of accept it. They say, okay, you give up, so you stop trying. No, I try and accept it. What, what are we doing in our life that we try and accept it? I go to the store. I would prefer not to have a queue at the cashier. That would be really nice. But I come to the store, there's a queue. Do I every time when I come into the queue get pissed off asked, or in a bad mood? No, I accept it. I stand there. I'm not in a bad mood. It's an unwanted situation. But I'm in acceptance. I'm, what can I do? I drive a car, I come to the red traffic light. Do I get every time irritated or negative because it's a red traffic light and I can't go? No, I accept it. That doesn't mean I stop trying. I get out of the car and lie on the ground and I give up. Trying to get to my goal, huh? my destination. I would like to get to my destination, but I am held back in stages by traffic lights or different cars and I'm not getting pissed off, right? I, I accept it. I'm still trying to get to where I want. Very focused, I'm trying to get, but every now and then I get stopped. So I wait, I accept it, not negative. So I play tennis. My goal is to come to the end of the match as a winner. So I shake hands, I win, if that's the goal, right? Along the way, I will get stopped by a mistake. I, I accept it. What can I do? I tried my best, I focus, I try. These are my current skills, so I miss. So, what? What can I do? I've been trying for 30 years and uh, they don't go away. So now, I already accept after maybe six years, five, six, eight years. I think I accept it soon because I played a lot of sports since I was seven years old. So sports can somehow becomes normal, missing normal, basketball missing normal, football missing the goal normal, table tennis missing the ball normal. What can I do? It's difficult. I play tennis, I'm missing the ball normal. Normal. What can I do? It's not my fault. It's difficult sport. But most people don't think. They think it's them. I'm stupid, I'm clumsy, I'm whatever. Then they just hammer it even more down, more low self-esteem low self-confidence why we need to come up love yourself respect yourself encourage yourself right every time you come on a tennis court because you know when you come on a tennis court you know what's your number of mistakes today it's zero you come when you come you enter the door is zero you feel good after 10 minutes your number of mistakes is 15. You already feel a bit bad. Why? You know how bad you're going to feel after one hour? Because the number of mistakes is going to go from zero to a hundred. Every single time you come on a tennis court, you're going to start with zero. You again, optimistic. Maybe today is going to be the day when I don't miss. <laughs> no. 
You see the futility, it's futile to, you must think. What is this guy saying? <laughs> you understand? My mind is in a mode, you, our mind is being conditioned through childhood. It's working some, you know, wait a minute, your mind, you're wrong. You're wrong, going this way. You're Negative on mistake, punishment after mistake. You're wrong. It applies only to chocolate cakes and losing weight. Or a child running towards the road. No! You must stop the child. Dangerous. It can be eliminated after <laughs> some years probably. You tell me, you're the father. It doesn't take three repetitions, right? It takes years. You're shouting, no! Sometimes even punishment a little bit. No, don't run. Huh. They get shocked. Here, no. He will not stop. He will not stop. You can get feedback though. It doesn't mean you give up. Again, it doesn't mean you give up. It doesn't mean you don't correct yourself. You don't understand. But you don't get negative and judgmental when you, when you miss. You don't say, if you made the wrong choice, you are leaning backward and you decided for a down the line shot. Then you realize, oh, that's a bad idea. When I play down the line, I should be forward. Then I, otherwise I lose control. If you're backward, better play cross court. You can still manage, you learn that. So if you happen to go backward and you hit down the line, you don't have to judge that negatively. Oh, you stupid idiot. No, you give yourself feedback. Ah, I see. Ah, it's neutral, it's just feedback. Oh, I see. This doesn't work, now next time. No, no punishment, no parent in the head, just better. You feel better about yourself.